Hey guys, welcome back to CopTool. I'm Rob, alongside me is Sarah, and this is what happened this week in the world of power tools. The Milwaukee rear handle surf saw has landed. Yes, it certainly has. This old house plays the classics, and we get wrench advice from a bear. Those stories and more coming up next. This is your CopTool Week in Review. Our headline today is the absolute domination of the new Milwaukee rear-handled circular saw that finally started to arrive on doorsteps this week, immediately followed by the shrieks of joy. Thank you. Just like that. We got no less than three major videos this week from the likes of Clint, Vince, and Kyle, all three of whom came away seriously impressed with the new rear-handled beast. If you're determined to replace your corded worm drive and can't wait for Skillsaw to just make a cordless version already... Whoa, calm down, Bucky. Bucky? Bucko? Buckaroo? Okay, none of those. Then you should check out all three videos this weekend. Do you like kitschy tool inventions you'll want but never buy? You sure do. Of course you do. And thanks to our favorite Earth primate, you can see a whole host of them on YouTube. Stan the Dirt Monkey Genetic... Genetic? Genetic. Genetic shared a video from the National Hardware Show, specifically from the Inventor Spotlight section, where all new inventions are on display. Stan finds a ton of really creative ideas, some of which are already available on Amazon. To see all of the products, including links, visit Stanley Dirt Monkey Genetic on YouTube. All combination wrenches are the same, said no one ever, so the tool furry. The tooth furry? Tool furry, you know, because it Never mind. He emerged from his den of tools to test 16 different wrenches and determines once and for all oh which wrench is the best. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I'll say this. It's not the cheapest one. Is it the second cheapest? Yes, actually, but I'm not going to tell you which one that is. To find out, head over to Den of Tools on YouTube. They're back! Corduroy jumpers? What? No, why would you ever guess that? No reason. No, no, Oz Tool Talk is back after a month long hiatus. Because I banned them. Not true. I actually think they're on vacation, but they're back to bang on about tools. And this time they are doing a huge impact driver head to head, including Milwaukee, DeWalt, Hokoki, and more. To be honest, I wouldn't care if they were comparing toothbrushes. I'm just glad they're back. You can find their compare -all at Oz Tool Talk on YouTube. Now the world of power tools would still remain a trade secret if it wasn't for groundbreaking shows like This Old House. The series is about to celebrate its 40th season on PBS. To mark this event, This Old House will be posting the first episode of all 40 seasons on YouTube leading up to the 40th anniversary special on August 17th. We had a ton of fun this week watching several episodes including the very first that started with, Hi, my name is Bob Vila. Each video will only be on YouTube for a limited time so be sure to get over to This Old House on YouTube and watch these classics while you can. I watched This Old House with my dad all the time when I was a kid. Yeah. And I think it was popular because they featured actual work. Nice segue. Speaking of, it is time for actual work with Rob Robillard. Hey guys, have you ever run into a situation where you had a spinning, stripped, or bent screw? Super frustrating to get out, right, and to deal with. Here's a couple ways that I use uh, dealing with them. If the, if the screw itself is spinning, I try to get the screw started by applying pressure on the screw head and then put a little pressure on the threads of the shank of the screw. And what I mean by that is I use a pry bar or a utility blade and I try to get under the screw head and apply pressure to that shank. And then once the screw starts to spin, if I can get under it and pull, push up a little bit, as long as I can get that pry bar or utility blade into the threads, it creates enough friction to actually facilitate backing out that screw. Now, if the screw is embedded and stripped, sometimes the best thing you gotta do is use a screw extractor, uh, which is a specialized tool. Um, if the screw is protruding, you can see it, and the head is broken off or the screw is bent, my favorite trick is to basically just take a drill, cordless drill, chuck the drill over the exposed shank, and then slowly back the screw out in reverse. It's an easy trick. Um, you know, it's something someone showed me a long time ago and it's, I still use it today. Hope that helps guys, take care. Thanks Rob. You know, he just knows stuff, like all of the things. I'm aware. Anyways, it is time for the Cop Tool Maker Break. This week, John Heiss from I Build It continued his quest to replace all of his shop tools with wooden versions when he shared his second video in the series, Making a Table Saw. In this video, John shared how he built the tilt trunnions and the hand wheel for his shop made table saw. It's so cool. Well, all of his videos are super creative like that. You can find him at I Build It on YouTube. And completely unrelated, I hear Powermatic is going out of business. 
The Wood Whisperer shared a tutorial this week where he made a movie poster box complete with LED lights for his home movie theater. It is such a simple concept, but it looks so good. He even left one side of the frame removable in order to change out the posters as needed. Mark shares every step of the process in his typical detailed fashion and even explains why he didn't use his drill press. Probably should have used my drill press for this, but uh, blah, 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 blah. I can relate to that excuse. I think we all can. You can find this video on Mark's channel at The Wood Whisperer on YouTube. Last but certainly not least, Colin Furs was up to his normal shenanigans this week. This time he solved a problem we all have, not having hydraulic jaws mounted to our arms. You know, for crushing and chopping things. What, that's not a problem you have? Oh, come on, that can't just be me. Fine, maybe it's not a common problem, but it is definitely an entertaining video, and if you haven't watched it yet, you need to. He chomps down a tree with his arm. Go follow Colin Furs on YouTube. That's it for this week's Maker Break. If your favorite maker posts something great this week and you want it to be featured on the show, email me at projects at coptool.com or just add it to our playlist. Rob will explain a little bit more about that at the end of this video. It's time for industry news brought to you by constructionjunkie.com. Now falls are by far the leading cause of fatalities in the construction industry, accounting for nearly 40% each year. That fact's the main reason why personal fall protection devices are so heavily stressed in the industry. But even if your fall is arrested by a harness, you're not out of the woods yet, as serious complications can happen when you're being suspended in the air. Now this week, the team at the Center for Construction Research and Training shared an hour-long webinar about avoiding suspension trauma and reminding us why it's critical to always have a rescue plan in place. If you work in an elevated job site, you can find a link to the video below. The results are in for the 2019 Best Construction Podcast Competition, and last year's winner, the ConExpo ConAg Radio Podcast, once again comes away with the crown. Hosted by Peggy Smedley, the monthly podcast features interviews with experts in many aspects of construction, such as technology, occupational health and safety, regulations, and education. You can find it all and all the construction industry news you need at constructionjunkie.com. Before we go, we want to share a couple of our favorite Instagram posts from this week, starting with Rob Robillard from Toolbox Buzz, who decided it was a good idea to strip a roof with a bobcat. Yikes. Murray shows us just how fast a flexible 2-inch SDS Max drill can work its way through a foundation. That's with batteries, people. Kiefer uses a standard diamond wheel on his Bosch grinder to prepare a foundation crack for an epoxy injection. No clue why, that is so much fun to watch. But it is. Yes, it is. And finally, Hugh from HD Carpentry showed off, what else? The Milwaukee rear handle circular saw. And thank goodness, I missed it since the beginning of the show. All right, before we go, Rob, do you wanna explain everyone what happened with your massive screw up last week? I wouldn't say it was a massive screw up, just, all right. So last week, we got this super clever idea in our head. We got the idea? Okay, it's a group, all right. Group effort, okay. kinda. Mm -hmm. Anyways. We were hoping to use hashtags in order to allow our fans to share things they thought should be on our show. And as it turns out, <laughs> didn't know this, um, but hashtags will only work and show up in searches when they're used by the original poster. So you leave a comment with the hashtag, it does nothing. So first of all, we had a contest. We were gonna yes. give away, a, 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 what is it, a Metabo 12 volt drill yep. kit from Ohio Power Tool. Mm -hmm. Specifically, uh, <laughs> Matthew Forrest Lowe, um, who's been a big fan of ours for a long time. He comments all the time, follows us. He's a great guy. His kids are fans of His kids, show. kids are even fans. He went out of his way to reach out to us and worked all week trying to find a way to make the hashtags work for us. And we really appreciated that effort. So we're gonna go ahead and send him the Metabo 12 volt drill kit. Congratulations. And once, you know, for like a 15th time, thank you, Matthew. We appreciate your support. All right, so how are we going to fix the hashtag problem? All right, so we have a, alternative plan. <laughs> it turns out YouTube has a feature on their playlist called Collaborative Playlist. So we've created a playlist on our channel called This Should Be on Cop Tool, and we made it collaborative. What that means is that we get a special link, which we will put in the description for these videos. If you are logged in to YouTube and click on that link, it'll take you to the actual playlist, and it will show at the top that you've been invited to be a collaborator. Once you click 
continue, I believe. <laughs> From then on, our playlist will show up in yours and you can add to them. So as you're finding you know, new content on YouTube at any time, right underneath the video, there's a little plus with the little hamburger yes. menu looking yep. thing to add to a playlist, add it to the This Should Be On Cop Tool playlist and we'll see it every week. And hopefully on a Tuesday when there's no weekend review for you to enjoy, you should be able to go to this playlist and find content that other people just like you have already liked. So give that a shot. We'd really appreciate it. Please, you know, try to figure that out. I, <laughs> I think it's going to work. We'll try it. We'll try it. All right. Well, I was gone this last weekend in Texas. And while yeah. I was gone, someone came by our studio and I'm super bummed I missed out on this. That's true. So Austin, <laughs> who goes by Tools at Work on Instagram, did swing by the studio this last week. And we're very happy to have him. And we used the opportunity to shoot the very first episode of a new series we're doing called Meet a Maker. So we took the time to interview him about his company, his history, about his Instagram channel as his platform of choice. Uh, he talks about how the platforms change talks about his favorite tools, a whole bunch of stuff. So it gives you a chance to get to know some of your favorite creators. And uh, I think your guys are gonna really like it, so make sure you subscribe because it'll come out this week. That's a really good topic we could use in the discussion this week. What's that? Um, leave, like, who do they want us to interview next? Oh, sure. Like, so we just started it. So if you have a favorite maker, um, leave a comment below, just with their name in it, who you want me to, who you want us to interview next. Awesome. Now, I have a list of people I want to interview, um, starting with April Wilkerson, um, but just curious, who would you want to interview next? If you've ever seen Sarah in the same room with April Wilkerson, then you'd understand why. She <laughs> literally <laughs> starts to shake. Okay, so if I got to pick somebody, <laughs> Like I would shoot for the moon. Like yes. I don't think this will yep. ever happen, but I, I, I intend to try. I'd love to interview Colin first. The first. The first. Yes. He does such <laughs> amazing work. His personality is ridiculously off the charts, and uh, and I can, can I can kind of relate I would to that. cry real so, tears. That would like, be really cool. So, anyways, you figure out who you'd like us to interview next and leave it in the comments below. All right, guys. Thank you, Ohio Power Tool, for sponsoring the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. We'll see you next week.